One that has a short pre-ganglion mm -hmm. and a long post-ganglion. And then we have one that has a long pre-ganglion and a short post-ganglion. Do you know which one's which? Um, just the first one with Anna. So this one, the first one is our sympathetic. Oh, just kidding. I think you have it right I'm there. But I uh, think you wrote penis and SNS, but you meant to write parasympathetic and sympathetic. Yeah, because I was looking at that, I was like, what? <laughs> sympathetic. And this one is parasympathetic. Sympathetic starts with an S, so it's pre on a short. You can remember it this way, that way. That's short. Mm -hmm. No, it's short. Right here is a ganglion. Right here is a ganglion. Okay. And then you have a pre-ganglion and a post-ganglion. So the neuron before it would obviously be the pre-ganglion. That's that fiber. And that fiber or that neuron. And then this one is the post ganglion. Okay? So, guaranteed test question which um, division of the ANS, so this is the ANS, autonomic nervous system, is composed of sympathetic and parasympathetic. So which division of the ANS has a short pre-ganglion and a longer post-ganglion? Sympathetic. Sympathetic, awesome. Okay. And then each of these are going to secrete different things. Because these are neurons, just kind of like your neuromuscular junction. Do you remember this picture? Yeah. Where acetylcholine <laughs> came down in a bio... It, Binded to a sodium ligand gate. Uh -huh. You're like, oh yeah, I face this time. Okay, just like this release um, neurotransmitters, so will these. Because I could draw this like this. Oops. You know? Mm -hmm. And then draw my receptor here. That's kind of how I'm drawing this. Okay. So, for both preganglions, they're both going to secrete, guess what? Acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. It's right there. As well as, actually, both of my parasympathetic is going to secrete acetylcholine. Both my preganglion and my postganglion. This one, on the other hand, secretes norepinephrine. Abbreviated any. <laughs> norepinephrine. Okay, and we call neurons certain names, certain names, depending on what they secrete. So if a neuron secretes acetylcholine, we call it cholinergic. Okay. So what do you think we call this neuron? Cholinergic. Yep. That's a cholinergic neuron. Here's a cholinergic neuron. This is a cholinergic neuron. Is this a cholinergic neuron? No. So neurons that secrete norepinephrine we call adrenergic. Adrenergic neurons. Okay. And then we have certain receptor sites, right? So just like here, it was a um, sodium ligand gate. We actually also call that an N1 receptor, is the name. Just so you have something to compare it to. The receptors here, we call it an N2 receptor for both preganglions. That's an N2 receptor. Meaning nicotinic. 
So that's for all pre. Mm -hmm. All pregnenions are going to release acetylcholine that's going to bind to an N2 receptor. Nicotinic. Nicotinic. Oh, wow. Okay, and then when that synapses, just like here we had a chain reaction, then we had another action potential, you know, and then it went on to then affect something else. Uh -huh. This is going to affect, affect then the next neuron, whether it's a cholinergic or an adrenergic. And when those are affected, then they're going to secrete different things. These are now our effectors. So whether it's going to our heart, or our lungs, or our eyes, or our stomach, mm -hmm. these are all going to be effectors. So for parasympathetic, we call this our rest and digest. Mm -hmm. So it's like right now, we had lunch, we're kind of tired, just mm -hmm. figuring out how to <laughs> digest our food. Sympathetic though is fight or flight. Fight or flight, awesome. So if someone comes in here with a gun, we're going to go, okay, survival mode, mm -hmm. okay? So these are our effectors. So let's say, what's an example for effector organ, maybe for rest and digest? Maybe our intestines? <laughs> There's your intestines, <laughs> and you have receptors on them. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> so your receptor is going to be a M1 or an N2, and it's kind of like N2 through N5. And they're called muscarinic. Muscarinic receptors. Just like this one was nicotinic. Mm -hmm. That's for parasympathetic. Paras parasympathetic is kind of the easier one, less complex. Sympathetic though, probably because it's like survival mode, we need to change a lot of things going on. It's going to have more effectors. So maybe our heart would be one, uh -huh. as well as our lungs. Pupil style. Yeah, our eyes are going to be one. <laughs> so, we have receptors on all these. Oh yeah, let's draw a sweat gland. <laughs> okay, so there's receptors on all of these. And you'll learn next week more effector organs and exactly what receptors are on them. Mm -hmm. But just so we can get to your original question, but <laughs> on even, on sweat glands, those are called your alpha. No, what am I talking about? Yeah. <laughs> alpha 1 receptor is the name in alpha 1. On your eyes, the receptor is called a beta 2 receptor. Mm -hmm. On your heart, it's a beta 1 receptor. Do we have to know all these? Have them all mm -hmm. memorized? Yeah, next week we'll go more in detail okay. about which ones. I think at least, I'm pretty sure. And for your lungs, it's a beta 2. I learned it is we have two lungs, so beta 2. We have two eyes, beta 2. We have one heart, beta 1. And then like our sweat gland, our blood vessels, and our urethra are all alpha ones. So, if it's an odd number, like one, it's going to excite. If it's an even number, like the number two, it's going to inhibit. Okay. So, alpha one. Let's say someone comes in here with a gun. We're going to want to excite our heart, which is why it's a one. Mm -hmm. So then our heart will start beating faster and faster and faster and increase our heart rate. Increase heart rate. But like the beta two, it's going to inhibit. Our eyes naturally are pretty small pupils. Mm -hmm. We're going to inhibit them from constricting. So we're going to start dilating them. Making your eyes bigger so we can see what's going on, so we can find our escape routes and run. Our lungs, we're going to inhibit them. At rest, they're constricted. We're going to inhibit that. So we're going to let them expand, bronchodilation, and let them go out. So we can be able to run away and get more air into our body to run. So there's your key for this one. Inhibiting makes it would usually make something bigger than? Mm-hmm. 
I would think Excite would do that because it's exciting. It's like making. Mm -hmm. Think of it as inhibiting. Um, think of it as more like exciting muscle contraction or inhibiting muscle contraction. But it's not always muscle contraction. Uh -huh. But just think contraction. You're like making things smaller. Uh -huh. So if we're exciting muscle contraction, our heart's gonna go faster. What do you think if we're inhibiting muscle contraction, our lungs are going to dilate? If we're inhibiting muscle contraction for our eyes, they're going to dilate.